Hi and welcome back to my channel and on this week's video we're looking at this problem here so it's a circle with a regular hexagon uh, where obviously one side of the hexagon is or one vert vertex of the hexagon is going to the centre of the circle and it's got this uh, line going from one corner uh, or vertex of the hexagon to a side of the hexagon which is a tangent to the circle and we need to work out uh, for this regular hexagon, side length 10, what the length of this tangent would be. So you're probably going to want to do a sketch of this if you want to try this problem yourself, because you might need to draw a few different lines on there to work things out. But if you want to have a go at it now, pause the video so you can have a go at it for yourself before I go through my solution. Do it! Just do it! Okay, going to go through it in three, two, one. Right, so the first thing that I would do with this problem is to put some additional lines on it. And the first line that I would think to do is this line. Uh, using my circle theorems, I know that um, a radius means a tangent to the circle at 90 degrees. So my, fir my first thought would be to put that line on. Because that's got to be useful, surely. There, there must be some reason that... Uh, or some useful uh, reason uh, that it's a tangent that we can use in, in our solution. Now, after that, you probably want to play around and work out a few different things and try a few different things. And one thing you might come to find that is quite useful or could be useful is um, making a couple of other triangles. So these two triangles specifically could be very useful. Now, the reason that this right-hand one is particularly useful is because we've got a right angle in it, so that's given us one angle. Uh, we then need um, another angle and a side length to use trigonometry to work out the length of x there. Now, it then comes down to whether we can work out uh, this side that we've introduced at the top left and vertically on the right hand side here. Can we work that out? Well actually because it's a regular hexagon uh, we can. So uh, it's all got side length 10. Now using that um, I also know that well because uh, the angles, the interior angles of a hexagon, so this angle in particular and these corner angles, I can then work those out from this. The interior, uh, interior angle of a hexagon you can work out using the formula n minus 2, uh, which is a uh, number of sides, take away 2, and then if you times that by 180, because there's always two less triangles you can fit in a uh, regular shape, or any shape actually, any polygon, uh, than the number of sides. So times that by 180 to get the total, and then divide by the number of sides in that shape. So six sides, we're going to do four times 180, and divide by six, because that's the number of angles. And that's going to give us an answer of 120. So that tells us that each interior angle here is 120. Now... This triangle here is an isosceles triangle because they're both 10. So 180 take 120 gives me 60. Split it between these two angles and we get 30 degrees. So that's going to be the same for this right hand triangle as well. Now from there, what we need to do, or what we can do, is use that information. So if we drop a perpendicular, to work out the base here, so half of this top left uh, line that we've introduced, we can work that out using uh, trigonometry. So we've got 30, I'm going to use the 10. Um, so what I want to do is 30 and it's adjacent and hypotenuse, so uh, that is going to be uh, using cos. So I'm going to do cos of 30 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse which is 10. So now if I do 10 times by cos 30, that will give me the adjacent which is going to give me 5 root 3, okay, uh, because cos 30 is root 3 over 2, and then if I double that to get the full length I'm going to get 10 root 3. So this full length here is going to be 10 root 3 and it will be the same for this length here, so that's also going to be 10 root 3. Now, 
I do also know that this length here is a radius of my uh, circle and it is also the length, or has to be, uh, of the sine of the hexagon. So that's also 10. Right, now if we then use uh, Pythagoras, so if we do 10 root 3 um, and we square it, so we're going to get 10 squared which is 100, root 3 squared which is 3, so 300. Um, we've got square root 300 minus 10 squared, so minus 100. Square root it, that's going to give us an answer of 10 root 2, uh, or square root 200. So this side here, 10 root 2. Now that side is just from uh, here up to here. Okay, so it's just up from, well, just part of the x length. It's not the whole length, obviously. Well, I hope that's obvious anyway. Right, now from there, hopefully you can see that if I work out this angle up here, which I'm going to call alpha at the moment, and I'll call this one next to it beta, if I work out this angle alpha, um, this whole thing must be 60 because this whole angle has to add up to 120 because it's the interior angle of a hexagon. So we do 120 take 30 take 30 is 60. So this alpha plus beta equals 60 degrees. So we can work out alpha using trigonometry, using any of these sides and either sine, cos or tan. Take that away from 60 to get beta. And then what we can do is use trigonometry again with beta and 10 root 3 uh, to get the full side length here of x. Now, before I do that, and the reason I've explained that is because if we just do that, that way that I've explained, we're going to end up with a decimal answer. We're not going to get an exact answer. Now, that's perfectly fine because you can round that. But if you want an exact answer, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful than that because the calculator won't give us an exact answer that way. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this working out to the right hand side very quickly, just so we've got a bit more space. And then we're going to think about a little bit more carefully how we could do this. So, like I said before, that beta is going to be 60 minus alpha. And if we want to work out x, we're going to use the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So that's cos. So we need to work out uh, cos of beta. Okay, cos of beta is going to be equal to uh, the adjacent 10 root 3 over x. And then we can rearrange that to uh, work out what the x is when we've got a value for cos beta. So cos beta, well, that's going to be cos, like we've said, of 60 minus alpha, because beta is 60 minus alpha, that whole angle there is 60, take alpha away, you get beta. Right, now, this is the part where if you haven't really, well, if you haven't done, I believe it's A-level, um, if you haven't done A-level, you might do this on different, I say believe it's A-level, because it different courses learn slightly different things, and if you do further maths as well, you might learn things like this, or if you're just interested in maths, you might have come across this before. So, Cos of 60 minus alpha, what we're going to do is we're going to use a formula to rewrite that in terms of uh, coses and sines. So cos 60 minus alpha we can rewrite as cos 60 uh, cos uh, alpha plus uh, sine 60 sine Hopefully you can see, I've squeezed it in there, but hopefully you can, uh, well, you've heard me say it anyway, you know what I've written there. Sine 60 times sine alpha. Okay, now cos 60 is one half. Now cos alpha, we're going to need to use our triangle here. Now cos alpha is um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 10 root 2 over 10 root 3. The 10s will cancel and we'll end up with root 2 over root 3. Plus sine 60, which is root 3 over 2 times by sine alpha, so we've got alpha here, uh, sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, that's 10 over 10 root 3, which will simplify to 1 over root 3. Now these dots in between the two things just mean multiply, if you, if you didn't know that. So we're timesing these two things together, uh, and on the left that's going to give us root 6 over 6, and on the right that's going to cancel down to leave us with a half. 
simplifying that a little bit more, we're going to get 3 plus root 6 over 6. So that's our value for cos beta. Now we're using the triangle, like we said before, uh, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's going to be 10 root 3 over x is equal to 3 plus root 6 over 6. Now if we flip both of those fractions, uh, what we're going to get is x over 10 root 3 is equal to 6 over 3 plus root 6 times both sides of the equation by 10 root 3 and we get x is equal to uh, 60 root 3 over 3 plus root 6. Now if you simplify that, or I say simplify and even rationalise the denominator, or if you get your calculator to do that, what it will give you is uh, an answer of 60 root 3 minus 60 root 2, which you can write as 60 brackets root 3 minus root 2. And if you want to write that as a decimal, then you will get an answer of 19.07 to two decimal places. And the units there are centimetres, I believe. No, we haven't given the 10 units, so we'll just leave that as 19.07, okay? Now, I hope if you, if you tried that yourself, you were able to, to get that answer. If you were, and if you had a different way, please leave it down in the comments below, because I'm always interested to see different ways that people are able to solve the problems. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that one. It was an interesting problem this week, a little bit more of a tricky one, I think. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. If you like this video, then there should be plenty more videos just up here. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's here. That's where it should be, the one that you want to watch next. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.